Hey guys, today we are doing a spooky Halloween Q&A. Well, actually a pumpkin carving Q&A. So it should be a fun time. We have some questions in here that you guys have asked. And then we have our huge pumpkin and three designs that I printed off of online. I'll actually put them all below so you can all access them. And I will start answering your questions while I carve pumpkins because I don't know about you guys, but carving pumpkins takes me some serious time. Like I already messed up. I have to lower this. It's not easy. I think people assume it's just fun and games, but I take it quite seriously. Okay, so I forgot that the hardest and least fun part is that you have to make a top. I try and be really strategic with this and actually do like a line and then another line and then another line to kind of connect it. <laughs> You'll see what I'm talking about. Um, and until then, let me answer one question. This is from Izzy Rose with two E's underscore eight. Favorite fall movies. Um, and I'll put the old questions in the pumpkin trash jar. Um, favorite fall movie, I have to say, if we're talking Halloween, it's gonna be The Nightmare Before Christmas because I love the music and anything with music is a win for me. I hate scary movies. They just don't do anything for me. I hate scary things. So all in all, Halloween and Halloween movies are like a no-go for me. There you go. Nice and pretty. We'll put that there with all of our other fall decorations. I'm actually gonna pull up these black sleeves because it's about to get messy. Oh my god. <laughs> this one is from Matt's brother, Ryan, at Ryan or R Craig52. And he says, Does Mr. Matt talk about his brother a lot? For anyone who does not know, and hi Ryan if you are watching, Matt has an identical twin brother named Ryan. So if you see someone like Matt walking around, it could be Matt or it could be Ryan. Um, and Ryan, yes, he talks about you all the time. What can I say? You two are an awesome pair. Um, you guys just can't get enough of each other. <laughs> and on that note, I'm just going to keep cleaning out this wonderfulness. Um, usually I save the pumpkin seeds and make, um, baked, what are they, pumpkin seeds? <laughs> <laughs> I bake the pumpkin seeds. Okay, so our pumpkin is officially cleaned, well, mostly. Tessa did come back here and help me for a second because I was having trouble with my little arms getting all the way in there, but it is clean and we are ready to do our next step. I am going to start carving out the tracing that we have on the pumpkin. But before I do so, I'm gonna answer one more question before the carving. Okay, so this is a question I got from a reader over an email and she didn't actually give me her Instagram name, but she said, how do you edit your images and what camera do you use? This is by far one of my most asked questions ever. How do you edit your images? I edit them on Lightroom and basically all I do is I import my images, to Lightroom, I usually edit eight to 12 images per blog post. And all I really do is adjust the contrast, the exposure, and the warm. And by doing that, I like my images to look warm. I like them not to be super contrasted. And I like the exposure to be basically like medium level. So if it's overexposed, I'll bring the exposure down, or if it's super dark, I'll bring it up. But I don't like anything too bright. I kind of like it just to look normal and balanced. And then finally, I love a grainy vintage look, so I'll always up the grain on all my images to give it that kind of look. But really, that's how I do it. And for Instagram images, I'll enter them into Ves Visco, V-S-C-O, I think, which is an app um, and I use C3 on Visco for my Instagram, um, but overall editing images, I try and keep it to, an, to a minimum of what I do because I'm not an expert and I don't want it to look over edited if that makes sense. And what camera do I use? I use the Canon camera, I will link it below, and I use a 15 millimeter lens mostly for blog photos and I'll link that below as well. So there you go. It is time I'm going in with my little knife and my little template that I'll link below and I'm gonna cut this baby up. Let's see. I think this definitely is a talent that I don't possess, but hopefully it looks cute. I'll take my time on it. 
What's your favorite fall staple for clothing? And this was asked by Steffi with three Fs. Y with a Y. R O sales. First of all, this girl is very talented at baking. She actually sent me Christmas cookies, New England theme last year. I'll link them below on Etsy. She is very good at what she does, um, and she's a avid TCC reader, so I'm glad to hear from you. Um, my favorite fall staple this year for clothing has definitely been a vest. So I love things like this that just kind of cinch at the waist and kind of give like a average look, kind of like an oomph, so it makes it look more polished. And then the second thing that I've really been wearing this fall has been actually um, skirts, which is a new thing for me because usually it's so cold here that it's not even worth wearing a skirt. But it's been super chilly, so recently I've been styling um, some skirt looks, and I'll link those below over on my blog, and basically just skirts and tights and a sweater. It's been in the 70s and 60s, it hasn't been in the 50s a lot, so we've been able to get away with skirts, and it just looks so cute and way more polished. This is definitely a workout for your arm, let's just say that. Okay, we've got another eyeball down. Okay, this one's a long one. It's from at Lore, L-O-R, underscore Nova, N-O-V-O-A. She asks, when living away from the East Coast, if any of you guys don't know, I went to school in California, um, what is the one thing I decorate with to have my house remind me of home? That is a good question. I try and bring things from home to decorate my place with. So for instance, in my living room right now in Dallas, Matt and I have oars from my dad's boat up there. So that kind of has to do with both New England and our family. We have a lot of furniture pieces we bought in New England. And another thing that we decorate with definitely to remind us of home is pennants and local paintings. So we picked up a lot of paintings from artists within Connecticut who painted um, scenic images of colonial homes in Connecticut. So we have those hanging in my office. And then we also have pennants of everywhere we've lived um, hanging on a gallery wall. That way we can kind of always remember where we are and where we've been. Um, so we have Dallas. New York, because Matt's lived in New York, so we have a Dallas Cotton Ball pennant, a New York Yankees pennant, a Red Sox pennant, then we have a San Diego pennant for me since I went to college in San Diego, and then we have a Connecticut Yukon pennant for obviously where we're both from. So that's a fun way to bring New England and Connecticut into a home or into your college dorm room if you are away from home, because that can be hard, and having those little touches of home can really kind of like bring up your attitude, you know? Anyways, that's what I do overall. Okay, and now we're on to the nose, the most important part of a pumpkin. So, apparently our camera died. <laughs> so I don't know where we left off. I think I was talking about pumpkin wars. But this, oh, and now Bumpers is up here. Okay, so basically uh, the great, <laughs> no, with Bumpers. Oh, this is a good one. TCC Reader asks, who is in the TCC crew? So I always refer to everyone that helps me with the blog as the TCC crew because it really does take a team to put on a blog. I think Tessa can agree with that, especially now with video. Um, so Tessie is on the TCC crew. She's behind the camera right now. In essence, our videographer. So she's in charge of all video filming, video editing, sound, and all that stuff. Um, so we have Tessie on the TCC crew. We have Matt. He's in charge of taking a lot of my photos. He's in charge of helping me working with brands. So that's communicating with them because my inbox can get overwhelming at times. Um, and he helps me scout locations, which takes a long time actually. And people don't really even think about that. But finding locations to shoot photos can take a while. So he's on the crew. Then we have one intern and she's been with us for six months and she's on the crew. She helps us with our weekly newsletters. Um, and every week we send out a newsletter that is a specific town in Connecticut that is in its prime to visit. Um, and we send out where we would recommend you staying, eating, um, and what to do in that town. Um, and that goes out every Sunday at five. I'll link that subscription down below if you want to subscribe. It's free, you just enter your email. 
Um, and she helps me put that out every week on top of keeping up with Pinterest and Twitter and all those other things. And then finally, my mom, obviously when I'm in Connecticut or going on vacation, she also helps us shoot um, or photos of Matt and I. She's the one behind the camera with that. So in essence, I always refer to us as a TCC crew because usually, if you think about it, if you see pictures of me at an event, it's probably not just me. There's probably someone there taking my picture. Um, so I just refer to us as the crew. Who will you see when I say we're going somewhere? Could be Tessie, could be Matt, could be my mom, um, but we do move in a group. So, and that's a fun part about vlogging too. It's never a solo job. Never think it is. It looks very much like it's just me, but it's very much not. Um, and I love that about it. Okay, so I just finished the B and one of the O's in the boom now. Um, it's starting to kind of look like Jack Lantern, but I feel like you can't really tell until I have a candle in there, which we'll show you guys tonight. Um, let's pick another question. So at Caroline Laz, L-A-N-Z, asks, what are your favorite fall destinations in Connecticut? This is a good one. Um, I really love going to the old cider mill in Glastonbury. So that is a favorite of mine. I went there a lot when I was a child. Um, and they have llamas and donkeys and an old cider mill, so you get like caramel apples and cider and I just have a lot of memories of going there and getting the caramel to make caramel apples with at home so I always go there obviously apple picking so for a destination lime and orchards um and I also did a blog post last week I believe on nine apple orchards to visit in Connecticut so check that out but lime and orchards is definitely a favorite of mine and then for other places I always try and go to like north, northern Connecticut, um, like Yukon Stores has a lot of beautiful old homes um, and they get a lot of color. Thumpers is back up here, I don't think you guys can see her. Um, they get a lot of color. So I would say for destinations, apple orchards being lime and orchards and um, the old cider mill in Glastonbury. At K. Joe Jones asks, what is your morning routine? So to be completely transparent, I am not a morning person by any means. Um, in high school, I would literally roll out of bed, put on my uniform, do my hair, get in the car. I would only listen to Christmas music. No one was allowed to talk to me until I got to school. Um, that's how much of an anti-morning person I am. So now that I work from home, what I do is I usually wake up around 7.30 and I'm in bed from 7.30 to 8 just going over my social media and my emails. I know that's probably not the best thing to do right when you wake up, but my alarm will go off, I'll grab my phone, I'll first usually open my emails and see if there's anything urgent that I need to respond to because sometimes things come over through the night and I just like to get those out of the way first. If nothing's urgent with email, then I'll go to Instagram and I'll either post an early morning Instagram going live at 8 or I'll just respond to DMs and then I go down the line. Then I'll hit Pinterest, Facebook, post what I'm going to post for Facebook that day or schedule it um, and then I'll hit Pinterest and we heart it and I think I already said Twitter, but Twitter is usually around the last one I hit. Um, and that's kind of my morning routine. Then by eight o'clock, I get out of bed dressed, ready, and then, um, and then I sit down at my desk in my office and then I continue working. So I give myself like a half an hour to kind of slowly ease into the work day. And then starting at eight, I have to get out of bed um, and get moving. So that's kind of my morning routine now. Not anything glamorous, but it works. Um, I'm definitely a night owl. And one more question before the carving continues. At, I'm gonna butcher this name, sorry, Maglia Genie underscore. Um, when did you start getting interested in blogging? Um, I'll carve while answering this question because it's kind of a long one. So blogging, I got interested in when I was actually in school in California. I haven't heard about blogging until I started college, which was in 2012. Um, and then I was finding out about all these local San Diegan bloggers who really inspired me to start a blog. I started my blog as a way to show my friends my New England style in California as a lot of them have never been to New England and they want to know what the houses look like, what the town looked like. Um, a lot of people either thought I lived in a town that was like Gilmore Girls 
Even if you ask me if Star Wars Hollow was an actual town, fun fact, Gilmore Girls is filmed in LA, so I had to break that news to them. Star Wars Hollow is not a town. Um, and then the other half of people really thought it was like a Ralph Lauren dream house, like a Barbie dream house, but for Ralph Lauren. So it was fun coming home, shooting pictures of local houses, of local foods, um, of local style, and putting it on my website so my friends in California, who were mostly from California, could kind of see what my home was like. Um, and then I would post things in California for my New England friends to see, and that's how it all started, just a way to like share the two cultures I was living in. Then I just really loved it from there and continued, and here I am today. So that's how I got started with the blogging side. Um, and then it also asked about YouTube. We just started filming YouTube videos um, this summer, actually. I love watching YouTube videos, so I figured it's about time to just jump right into it. And I'm lucky enough to have Tessie, who loves videography here, to help me edit because that was the one thing I was really hesitant about, um, especially because it already takes me enough time right now to do everything with my blog. I was worried that taking on editing videos would decrease my time for my blog, but I'm lucky enough to have Tessie on the crew behind the camera so she's here and she can edit these and we can all see this in a timely manner because if it was just me, it would be a big struggle to get it all done. So that is that. Oh, this is a good one. They asked hardest part about blogging that no one knows. The hardest for sure part about blogging is creating the content. So it's, for me at least, it's super easy to think of the content and have an idea of what I wanna shoot and how I want it to look and kind of have this idea in my head. But it's super hard scheduling out time to shoot it, especially if it's an extravagant uh, like shoot idea. So if I want to do like a ski shoot, then that like takes time getting to a ski mountain, like getting a ski pass, getting skis, getting ready, finding a photographer, finding a location without a lot of people. Um, so I think the hardest part is actually creating the content and having it produced in time for it to go live. So everything you see on my blog is at least produced one day ahead of time. Sometimes it's the day before, sometimes it's even the morning of, but it's always produced ahead of time and that can get tricky, especially during the holidays when everyone's traveling. Um, so scheduling out time with a photographer can really help with that, but I think people don't realize how much time goes into planning the content and producing the content that you then see. Okay, so our pumpkin is basically done. We're gonna give you guys a close up, but we have one last question before we wrap this Halloween Q&A up, and it is a Halloween themed one. It is, what is your favorite Halloween costume you've worn so far, and do you have any plans for this year? Um, my favorite Halloween costume, <laughs> this one's kind of funny guys, um, I think I was in fifth grade, <laughs> this is really embarrassing, I got a custom Beauty and the Beast Bell costume made, um, it cost me like $40, I saved up, I was in fifth grade, okay, and I saved up, and it was Belle from like when she was in the village, so you know, blue apron Belle from Beauty and the Beast. And I had it made, I was so excited and I wore it and I was so happy and I thought I looked so good, but apparently it, it basically looked like a pilgrim costume and everyone thought I was a pilgrim and not Belle, which was really sad. And I had even brought books with me to be like, I'm Belle from Beauty and the Beast. Everyone thought I was like, oh, a pilgrim. And I was, it was so devastating, but it worked out for my little sisters because they always used it for school projects whenever the Pilgrim history lessons came up in elementary school. So it was a failure for me, but still one of my favorite Halloween costumes. And in terms of do I have any plans for this year, Matt and I have very special plans. We are staying in greeting trick-or-treaters and watching Stranger Things because the new season's coming out, I think a few days before Halloween. And that is a show that we watch together. We're not allowed to watch it on separate times, so Halloween will be reserved for exactly that. So that wraps up our Halloween Q&A. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Tessa and I have more videos coming. 
If you liked it, make sure to subscribe and comment below what you guys are doing for Halloween or if you've seen Pumpkin Wars on Food Network um, because those people are magical. Anyways, make sure to subscribe because more videos will be coming your way every Wednesday and every Saturday, hopefully a vlog. So things are getting exciting. Bye.